Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, right now I'm going to be talking about uh, keyframe interpolation in Cinema 4D and I'll try and keep it real short for you guys. I'll show you a, kind of the quick animation that I'm talking about here. This is an animation of an iPhone uh, for a new iPhone app that's coming out. And uh, I'm going to talk about the three different interpolations that you can use for your keyframes in Cinema 4D. So if you click on any of your keyframes, I'm going to click on this one right here, you'll notice that the interpolation is set to spline. And what spline interpolation does is it creates automatic tangents that make, kind of, make for a kind of a smooth transition between your two uh, animated values. It's kind of uh, a common problem because for me at least this was the default setting. So if you notice, initially when I was making this animation, I wanted from 74 frames to 180 frames for the phone to stay completely still, no motion at all. But you'll notice that since it's set to spline, uh, the program's going to create an automatic curve. You'll see it kind of moves to the right, and moves to the left, and then carries on with the animation. Um, so one of the things that you have to change it to um, is something I'm a big fan of is the step interpolation. If we go over here. The step interpolation keeps the values of the keyframe uh, constant up until the following keyframes. So from here to 180, it's going to keep this value completely constant. So play that forward. Now there's no movement in between the two animated values. It's, uh, it's a little tough for me to talk about the linear uh, interpolation because um, the keyframes here at 74 and 180 were taken in the exact same spot. So if I do switch this to linear interpolation, it's going to act much like the step because the keyframes are in the exact uh, same place. But what the linear interpolation does, um, if I were to set, move the, move the iPhone over, coordinates over here, set a new keyframe, um, it it acts much like the spline in, in that it interpolates between the two keyframes, but it doesn't allow for the overlapping that's caused from the auto tangent. So um, there's also another way that you can kind of get this linear interpolation if you use the option the keyframe. Let me click on keyframe, which is the clamp option. And it's it does the same thing. It creates the overshooting uh, of the curves between the two consecutive keyframes. So, um, you know, I thought I'd just give you guys a quick little hint or a quick tip on using Cinema 4D and keyframe interpolation. This is Casey Baker, and thanks for watching.